welcome or welcome back. If you're new here, my name's Nina, and here at this channel we talk all about mental health, personal development, and understanding our own psychology. So if you are not yet a subscriber, please go ahead and become one. We definitely want you to stay connected. So what does it mean to bottle up our emotions? Well, it simply means that we are trying to suppress our innermost feelings, and in some cases, we are trying to actually avoid feeling them at all. Now, we can have many different internal and external motivations for doing this, but the problem is when we try to use this strategy, it does not actually make these feelings go away. It's almost like we're trying to keep a lid on a boiling pot. So even when we are pushing these emotions down, they are still right there beneath the surface and they can still seriously impact our mental and our physical health. But sometimes we may not have the conscious awareness that this is happening. So today I wanted to go over eight signs that we may indeed be bottling our emotions. And then I wanted to talk about the specific consequences that can happen when we do so. So let's go ahead and start with that list and you can see if any of these sound familiar. Number one, you rarely express your concerns. So this just refers to the tendency of not speaking up when something is bothering us or if something's making us anxious or if we have an issue with something. In fact, even if someone specifically asks us if we have a concern about something, we are more likely to deny that we do. Number two, you feel embarrassed to cry or appear vulnerable. So even when we suffer heartbreak or disappointment, we are not going to let other people see us cry and we are not going to show our emotions in any way because we feel like this open display of emotions really makes us look weak or we are afraid to look like we are not in control of our lives. Number three, you overreact to trivial issues. People that tend to bottle their emotions can completely ignore even major issues in their life yet really, really overreact to small, tiny things because the need to vent really is there, but maybe we don't want to admit the big problems and troubles in our life. So we really focus on these tiny little trivial things that often can set us off and really make us explode. We are trying to dump off our negative emotions without really addressing the real issues in our life. Number four, you distract yourself from problems. So we may engage in escapism or avoidance. So for example, we may binge a whole bunch of Netflix shows or we may endlessly scroll on social media or we may go on a huge shopping spree or we may even engage in self-destructive behaviors like smoking or drinking. But as soon as we start to feel that discomfort, we're going to want to either escape it or avoid it. And if escapism is something that you'd like to know more about, I have made two different videos on this topic. I will go ahead and link them down in the description box below so you have those resources. Number five, you feel uncomfortable around emotionally expressive people. Now this makes perfect sense because if we are trying to avoid our own emotions and bottle them up, we certainly don't want people around us that are openly displaying these emotions that may make us feel awkward, like we don't really know what to do or how to react or respond. And in some cases, it may even trigger the exact emotions that we've been trying to avoid in the first place. Number six, you have a third person perspective. When we're bottling up our emotions, we're really distancing ourselves from how we feel. So even when we are in a situation and we are interacting in a situation, we may feel like we're really observing it as opposed to really being a part of it. We may even feel very distant from people in general. Number seven, you avoid confrontation. So even when we feel like we've been wronged or that an injustice has taken place, we are probably not going to confront anyone because we would still prefer to avoid the situation rather than coming up with some kind of resolution or getting to the bottom of it. And number eight, you have a different personality when around others. So really then we have two personalities. We have our authentic self and then we have the mask that we feel that we have to put on when we are around other people because we are afraid that they are judging us. So for example, when we are around others, we may act calm and cheerful and upbeat, but when we get home, 
we may feel very, very anxious or very deeply unhappy. And this is because we are afraid of that criticism. So we don't really want to show our true colors. So we put on a different face. So I'm curious, do any of these sound familiar? Do you think you are bottling your emotions? If so, I do want to talk about why that is problematic. But if you're curious as to why you may be hiding your emotions and bottling them up in the first place, this is something that I did make a video about already. I will link that down in the description box below as well. It's called Hiding Your Emotions, and hopefully that can shed a little bit of insight on that topic. But what can happen to us when we bottle our emotions? When we avoid our feelings, we may begin to feel anxious and worried all the time, and ignored emotions may start to leak out spontaneously. We may begin to resort to unhealthy coping mechanisms, engage in excessive escapism, or adopt self-destructive behaviors. We may also experience physical symptoms such as frequent headaches or experience challenges to our mental health and well-being. Unfortunately, what happens when we bottle up our emotions is that we not only distance ourselves from the negative emotions that we are trying to avoid, but sadly also many of our positive emotions like happiness and joy. But when we can learn to let in our emotions, we can use them to our benefit. They are there for a reason. They're there to help us, to guide us to make necessary changes in our life. When we can embrace this fact and learn to experience our emotions as uncomfortable as they may be, we can start to express them more, which can lead to feeling and experiencing a lot less suffering in our life. So as always, I truly hope today's video was interesting and insightful, and I would love to hear your thoughts. So please do leave a comment below. If you enjoyed today's video, please like it, share it, and definitely become a subscriber. We want you to be part of our community. And I want to thank you so much for spending time with me today. I hope the rest of your day is extraordinary.